this is a very important study. Um, it demonstrates that through the use of this innovative device, we're able to decrease the rate of contamination of blood cultures by 90 percent. Now this is a huge impact because we have about 30 million blood cultures that are done throughout the United States every year. Although only a small number of them are contaminated, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2 to 3 percent, we're able to get that down to a very, very low rate of 0.2 percent in our study. When a contamination occurs, about half the time the patient gets started on antibiotics that are unnecessary and that subjects the patient to all those toxicities and side effects of the antibiotics that they don't need, plus it costs money. Oftentimes repeat blood cultures are done to try to find out if they were contaminated or real. This adds to the laboratory costs. Some data suggests that patients uh, stay in the hospital for several extra days and all of this adds a lot of money. Somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe four to five, maybe even up to $8,000 per contaminated blood culture. So if you multiply the tens of millions of blood cultures by two or three percent, you realize that that's a pretty big number. Somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 600,000 to 900,000 contaminated blood cultures. You multiply that by several thousand dollars per contamination and suddenly we're talking about billions of dollars of waste. So it's easy to see how this device can easily pay for itself if you're able to do like we did in our study and decrease the risk of contamination. Now the way the study was set up is we did this in the emergency department and we had patients who needed blood cultures because the physicians in the emergency department thought that they had a serious infection that might be accompanied by bacteria in their bloodstream. So we took those patients, they gave us consent to randomize them to having one blood culture drawn with standard culture technique and the other blood culture drawn in the other arm with this innovative device. It's called an initial specimen diversion device. And the way it works is that it diverts the first milliliter or two of blood from the blood culture into a little sequestration chamber. And then after that chamber is filled, uh, the device is activated and the blood flows down into the blood culture vial. We think it's the first milliliter of two that carries fragments of skin and contaminating bacteria that result in the blood culture contamination. Now, because we take a lot of special precautions, we scrub the skin very carefully with antiseptics, we use specially trained people to draw blood cultures, the rate of blood culture contamination is pretty low. In our study, it was less than 2%. But through the use of this device, we were able to drive that down by 90% down to 0.2. So that's an exceptionally low rate of contamination. We're uh, very pleased that this is going to be published in Clinical Infectious Diseases, a journal that uh, is coming out right now. Um, and I hope that this really changes practice.